When I think about handheld video game consoles, I don't often think about the Game Gear. I grew up in a Nintendo household. I had the original Game Boy, a Game Boy Color, a Game Boy Advance, so I really wasn't aware of the Game Gear until later in my life. Not to mention the fact that the screen was really terrible and it took six AA batteries to power it. Now that I'm older and I have some time to appreciate the consoles that I never had when I was a kid, I think it's time that we look at some Game Gear mods that make it a lot more usable. The main mod that we're going to be looking at today is this Ben Ven IPS screen. But I've also got a replacement shell from Retro 6, as well as this Clean Power GG mod. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how it all goes together. First things first, let's go ahead and open up this Game Gear. Now that we have all the screws out of the Game Gear, let's go ahead and very carefully open the case here like this. And if you go ahead and look inside here, you'll see those two sets of gray wires. Let's go ahead and detach them from the top part. And then there's one more set of wires done here for the speakers. Go ahead and disconnect that. And now we can take this bottom shell and put it aside. Next, we need to take this motherboard out by unscrewing the six screws around the outside edge. I think we may have to take these big screws out here as well. Now we can go ahead and lift this PCB out of the case and put this aside. Next we need to unscrew the LCD from the PCB using these four screws here. And now we can flip the LCD forward so that it lays flat like this. Now we need to remove this green piece of tape that attaches the flex cable here to the PCB. And then flip the whole board over. The next step is to remove the old LCD by heating up these pins here. We're gonna use some fresh solder and move from left to right, slowly peeling up the flex cable here as we heat up the pins. Let's go ahead and add some fresh solder. And I'm going to use some tweezers to help lift that flex cable up as we heat up each of the pins. We're just going to slowly move along, heat up each pin, and lift up. With the old flex cable removed, let's go ahead and clean up those pins with some solder braid. And then we'll clean up this area with some isopropyl alcohol. With the LCD removed, the next thing we need to do is remove this backlight. If you flip the PCB over, you can see that the backlight here attaches to the PCB on either end of these black parts here. If you don't have a desoldering gun, you can always use some side cutters to snip these wires, but since I have a desoldering gun, I'm gonna use that. And you can go ahead and put this aside. Now we need to remove another component, this gray coil up here that's marked L2. I'll add a bit of fresh solder here. And then again, I can use my desoldering gun. With the board prep steps out of the way, now we have to do some soldering to these LCD pins. The original method to connect the screen was to solder some wires from the 
pads here on the screen to some of the LCD pins here, as well as some other places on the board. Thankfully, Ben Ben has released this ribbon cable so that you don't have to do that anymore. This ribbon cable is sold separately, and I do highly recommend it over soldering all those wires from the board here to that screen. This Game Gear PCB is a VA1, which you can tell with the text at the top of the board here. So I'm going to use the VA1 ribbon cable. The first thing that I'm going to do is line up this part of the flex cable with the LCD pins here. We want to align this first pin of the flex cable with the first pin of the LCD pins. On my Game Gear, it's indicated by a 1, so that means the far left pin is not actually the first pin. The first pin is marked by 1. If you have the flex cable lined up correctly, you'll notice that this bit up here kind of falls over one of these pins. That's actually where I'm going to start soldering this flex cable. First, let's add some flux to that pin. And then I'm going to solder the flex cable to that pin. Now that this piece is soldered, let's go ahead and realign this flex cable so that the first pin lines up with that one pin of the LCD. Then we'll add some more flux. And with a little solder on my iron, I'm going to go ahead and tack this flex cable down. We'll add a bunch more flux and then we can solder the rest of these pins. You just want to make sure that you don't have any bridges between any of these pins. With these LCD pins soldered, we need to bend this little tiny flat part up so that the two pads on the flex cable match the two pads on the Game Gear board. When they're lined up, we go ahead and add some flux, get some more solder on our iron, and solder that flex cable to the board. And then we can just carefully flatten that flex cable. Now that we have the bottom of this flex cable soldered, let's go ahead and install the screen. The kit comes with this 3D printed bracket to hold the screen, so we're going to take the screen and make sure that this piece of tape is actually going through that bracket and orient it so that the flex cable that goes around the side here is at the top. Flip the PCB over. Then we're going to put the screen underneath. We're going to line the PCB up so that the holes that secured the original backlight are going to line up with the holes in that bracket. Then using the screws that held onto the original backlight, we're going to screw that screen onto the PCB. Before I secure those screws all the way down, I just want to make sure that the screen is lined up on this side. Looks like it's not quite lined up over here. Just gonna push it down. And then once we're happy with the alignment, we're gonna flip it back over and finish securing these screws. Now that we have the screen installed, now we have to solder the other side of this flex cable to the back of it. So let's line up the flex cable. We wanna make sure that all of the points on the screen match up with the flex cable points. And when we have it in a good place, let's go ahead and add a little bit of flux. Add some solder to our iron and go ahead and solder the top point. just to tack it down. At this point, you can adjust the flex cable if you have to so that all the pads line up. And if you're happy, go ahead and solder another point. Now we can solder the rest of the points. To finish installing the flex cable, now we have to do this little tiny one. We're going to orient the flex cable like this and actually sneak it under this flex cable of the LCD screen. This little flex cable is going to get soldered on top of the middle solder point right here. I'm going to use some tweezers to angle this down and get it soldered on top of that middle point. Now the other end is going to get soldered to the right side of this C38 capacitor. Let's move it out of the way for a second, add some solder to the right side of that capacitor, and then solder it to that capacitor. 
Now I thought we were actually all finished, but I missed two pads on this ribbon cable over here. If you look down here by this text, there's a small V right here in the ribbon cable. This might be hard to show on my camera, but there's a small pad in there called T10 that we're gonna have to solder that little via down on top of. So let's add some flux to T10. And then using some tweezers, I'm gonna push down on this ribbon cable gently, try to line up the via with that pad and go ahead and add some solder. Okay, now with this point soldered, we have to do one more up here. This one is called FB1. Now that we have all the flex cable soldered, let's go ahead and test our screen. Go ahead and bring in the old shell again, the bottom one, and go ahead and reattach these gray cables. And then go ahead and put in a game. I'm now gonna plug in my AC adapter and go ahead and turn the game gear on. And there we go, we know the screen works. If you start your game gear and you see nothing but a black screen, just go ahead and adjust the brightness so that you can actually see the screen. Then we can go ahead and turn the game gear back off and disconnect the PCB again. And go ahead and put the PCB aside. We're almost ready to assemble the game gear in our new shell, but I will need this audio board from the old shell. But first we have to remove this shield here. And then we could unscrew the audio board and take that board out. And just put this aside because we're going to need it in a little bit. Now you can go ahead and put this away because we're not going to be using it anymore. Now I'm going to bring out the replacement bottom shell and we can go ahead and install the audio board into it. The new case comes with some new screws, so let's use those. Now that we have the audio board installed, let's go ahead and install this clean power board. It's actually been about a week since I last worked on this Game Gear, because I had to wait for these Game Gear buttons to come in. I was hoping to reuse the original Game Gear buttons for this build. However, as you'll see in a few minutes, there's a necessary piece that comes with the buttons that does not come with the rest of the case. This piece is for securing the speaker into the shell, and it only comes when you buy buttons. So I might as well use the rest of the buttons in this build. Let's go ahead and add this 3D printed piece to the clean power board. It fits on here like this. And now we can add the new power switch. And let's go ahead and add it to the shell. And we can screw the clean power board in. And also with the buttons comes this little piece here that protects the battery compartment from getting dirt and stuff inside of the game gear. So we could peel off the sticker. and add that right here. Now we can put this aside and grab the new top shell. I do hate to ruin this nice new shell, but we do need to remove this screw post here because it interferes with the LCD screen. So I'm just gonna use some side cutters and cut it pretty flush to the bottom of the screw post. If you look around the edge of the screen hole here, you will see these tiny little nubs. Those have to be removed as well. Just make sure that they're pretty flat. I did order a new speaker, so I'm gonna install that down here. And now we can use this piece I was talking about earlier to secure the speaker. And it looks like there's only two screws for the speaker, not three. With the speakers all set, let's go ahead and install the new buttons. We've got this new D-pad. Goes in over here. And I've also got the replacement membranes because I saw some reviews that the original membranes don't fit these new buttons. I'm gonna put that right on top. And now these buttons here. They're kind of notched so you can't put them in the wrong way. And they get their own silicone as well. And finally, this start button or pause button goes up here. And it has its membrane too. 
This is kind of the point of no return for the LCD, so we're gonna go ahead and take this plastic off. Really? Unfortunately, the little piece of tape here ripped off of mine, but I was able to get the plastic off with my X-Acto knife very carefully. Well, let's go ahead and put the PCB down like this into the case. Make sure that the buttons are still okay. And make sure that this expansion port thing goes down good. I kind of had to push my PCB toward the middle in order to get the 3D printed part to kind of sit flat, but afterwards it was okay. Let's go ahead and take these silver screws and screw the big heat sink thing down into the case. And now we can secure the PCB with these little tiny screws. With the board screwed in, now we can bring back our bottom shell, start connecting these wires. And our new speaker can get plugged in here. This new connector seems a bit snug in there, but let's see if it works. Let's kind of hide our wires in here. the bottom case down. And now before we screw it all together, let's see if it works. Got a USB-C cable plugged into a charger and let's put it in the game. Turn it on. Seems like it's still working. Let's go ahead and screw it all together now. Now there's only these four black screws left of the screws that came with the new shell. So I'm not gonna use these at all and I'm gonna use the original screws. These screws are hard to install into this new case because there's no screw threads. Before you even put this case on, try to go through the threads at least one time to kind of add new threads to the new shell. And when we're doing the side of the speaker wire, we just wanna make sure that that speaker isn't being pinched. Also, do not install the screw that's here because that's actually the post that we cut off earlier. Putting all these screws back in here was kind of difficult. I ended up actually stripping one of them, so I just left it out, but there's still one last thing left to do. I have this new glass screen protector thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean any smudge marks off of the screen underneath. I'm just gonna use a microfiber cloth for this. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can take our glass protector out of this plastic. I'm gonna take the middle part out of this sticker so that it shows the window here. Now we can take this part of the sticker part off. And then we can line it up on the shell. Once it's in a good enough spot, we can press it down. Well, that's annoying. I got a little piece of dust underneath there, but all I'd have to do is take the Game Gear apart and clean under the LCD. Now that everything is reassembled, let's go over the button combinations that you'll need to change the different scaling modes. If you press the start button and push up, then you'll enable some scan lines. And if you press start again and hold down, then those scan lines will go away. The default scaling mode is a non-integer scale that's just big enough to fit the original Game Gear screen dimensions. This mode does a pretty good job of taking up the original Game Gear screen size. However, if you move left and right in certain games, you will notice some screen flickering. If you hold on the start button, we'll move over to another scaling option that is still not an integer scale from top to bottom, but is now a 2x scale from left to right. It does go off the edge of the screen here, but it's actually kind of nice with this semi-clear case that I have. I can still see the screen on the right and left sides. This mode should reduce that left to right flickering that the default mode had. If we hold on the start button again, we'll go into a true two times integer scale in both directions. This is gonna cut some of the video on the top and the bottom as well as the left and the right. However, while you're in this mode and you hold start, you can move the picture up and down with the up and down arrows on the D-pad. And then if you hold start one last time, we'll see a one time scale of the video. Now that we've gone over the different scaling modes, let me give you my final thoughts about both the case as well as the Ben Ben screen. I think this retro 6 case actually looks really good. This is a transparent black so you can see both flex cables inside as well as the PCB of the Game Gear. So it definitely has a more 90s vibe than the stock case. I haven't had any problems with the new buttons or silicone. There's no mushiness anywhere. Plus these black buttons are a little bit of a contrast to the see-through shell. As far as the Ben Ben screen, I wish I could show you a comparison between the stock screen 
and this screen. Unfortunately, when I got this Game Gear, the screen wasn't working well, so I can't really show you a comparison. But what I've seen from other YouTube videos, this really is a much better screen than the original. And by using that flex cable, the install is actually pretty easy. If this video helped you install your Ben Ben Game Gear screen, give it a like and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my console modding tutorials. I'll see you in the next video.